Many of my viewers know that I've been working on the silicon graphite power technology for quite some time. Uh, actually, it's been about six months now. We're going on six months, including the thin film variety as well. The black box is a product that encompasses that technology. And the reason why I've been taking so much time to develop this product is because I'm trying to meet the demands that uh, people really want. And what they want is they want a black box USB charger. Well, now we have it. And so let's take a look at the inside because some people don't even think this is a real product. And, uh, and, you know, and I get some crazy comments from time to time. And I don't care because <laughs> it's very real. So let's look inside. Okay, I've just removed several screws. So we'll take the cover off and take a look at the contents. All right, so let me just get that down there. So we'll go over some of these things. These are the power cells here. There's 12 of them. They're they're individual cells, so they're not uh, they're not connected other than an electrical connection from one to the next. These first six are in series, and then the second six are in series, and then those two bundles are in parallel. The same thing with these new lithium-ion batteries that I've got. These are 3.7 volts each and there's four obviously so these two here are in series as are these two and then the pair of these and the pair of these are then in parallel like like this is here so uh, so your net output is 7.4 volts it goes into the voltage regulator circuit which is right here and that goes into the USB detector with the output ports. Let's, let me go ahead and turn that on so you can see that's universal. It's uh, 5.2 volts. Of course, that'll drop a little bit if you plug in uh, one or two different devices into the, the uh, USB ports. This one here is meant for USB with data, but since this isn't a computer, it's, what it does is it, it cuts the current down a little bit. So if you want a faster charge, you want to use output uh, two, and that's going to give the uh, the most uh, uh, current. A couple of more points to address is uh, for those of you who don't want to do the math. These lithium batteries are two amp hours each, so in the series parallel connection, you end up with four amp hours of storage at 7.4 volts. Now, that's going to be extended because these are always live. They're always feeding these batteries. This is just your storage for the USB charging. And by the way, that does alternate from volts. It looks like a U, but it's actually a little V. It's 5.2 volts, and then this is the current. Now, it's reading zero because there's no USB devices plugged into it at this point. So, uh, but it will extend, these will extend that... Uh, that uh, total watt hours of, of delivery because of the fact that as these are being depleted these are trying to continue to fill them back up but actually once they are depleted to a, a reasonable point then you know your and your device is charged up you just turn this switch off and just let them recharge let these cells recharge these batteries back up and anywhere from 6 to 12 hours depending on how much you've uh, pulled them down through uh, USB device devices and I've also left these uh, these other banana plugs and, and where you can unscrew them and stick a wire straight down in each one of them. So that's all also there for your convenience if you want to run some other devices or you know whatever you have in mind. As a quick point of relativity the cells that are inside the black box are the same cells that I developed about six months ago, though vast improvements have been made on those cells over those six months. Uh, I think now that the, the life of these cells may be several years to maybe 20 years. I, I really don't know. I mean, only time will tell. There's no degradation that's, that's apparent on the outside, but I'm sure there is some on the inside. Uh, another thing I just wanted to show you, these are those lithium ion batteries that, that I'm using now. They're, they're not bad, they're the, they're the 14500s, so you can see that they're the 3.7 volts. Anyway, that's that, and we'll connect some devices. Okay, I've just plugged in my old iPod into the output port number one up here, 
and my iPad is going into the more powerful output number two port here since this battery is bigger and we just turn the switch on and you can see that that's chart well it's showing the charge up here but um, and this is obviously charging too the battery is already up pretty far on this but I just wanted to show you that it will drive both and pulls the voltage down 5.13 let's see it's drawing uh, almost an amp it's 0.94 when you need to recharge just plug in your mobile device turn on the switch and let it charge then when it's finished charging simply unplug your mobile device turn off the switch and put it away while it recharges its internal batteries by itself. In a previous video I showed you how four black boxes connected in series would run the G1 which is an experimental generator kit that uh, that we manufacture. Uh, with the lithium-ion batteries in here now those batteries actually charge up to a little over four volts each anybody that's used them knows that so you've actually got in series you'd have a 16 plus volts and it may not be for a super long duration but in that configuration in series that 16 volts is what the G1's ultra cap banks are looking for to keep them topped off because they're the ones that actually run the machine and all the job of the black box is is to keep them up to uh, 16 volts to, to maximum so your 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 efficiency from the conversion there is is uh, uh, much better when you go through the ultra caps. Uh, so anyway, but then the G1 turns around and charges large storage batteries. But the fact that the one single box could do that, maybe not for a super long duration, but uh, but it could do that. So that's just that's interesting, and I uh, thought you might like to know that.